Hey everybody, it's Ramona, welcome back. Uh, today I'm going to show you my new method of melting a candle. Um, and I did talk about it last week and I didn't get it done, so I wanna get it up there and share it with you. It's kind of weird, but we'll get to that in a minute. First of all, I just wanna show you this, oop, there's water in it, uh, this really cute uh, red truck water cup mug thing, which was $1 at Dollar Tree, love it. And my new favorite snack, I'm a chip nut. I'm a salt and cr I'm salty, crunchy, I could care less if I ever saw chocolate. These are incredible. Um, they are salt and cracked pepper chips. If you like pepper chips, try these ones because they are very, very peppery. If you're on the fence about pepper, you might not like these because they are really, really peppery and they're very crunchy. They're crinkly cut and yeah, yummy, yummy, yummy. Okay. So first, we're going to do a, uh, I've had this, I'm meeting to melt it for a while. It's a mainstays candle. I've already taken the label off and it's in mulled cider. And these uh, mainstays candles, there are a few of them that are really good. This is one, the cherry pie one was really good. Um, what else? The, um, it's the dupe of pumpkin pecan waffles. It's Pecan waffle cake is really good. But anyhow, so this is the one we're going to melt. Now, melting versus chopping. If you have a candle that is straight sided, you can put that in your freezer for about 30 minutes or longer, whatever you do, and then turn it over, pop it out on a kitchen towel and it'll pop out and then you can chop it. Um, if you have a container that is not straight sided, like Yankee candles or anything that has any kind of a lip or a bubble or a wavy pattern, anything, you're not gonna be able to get the wax out uh, because the wax has to get over that lip in the opening and it's not gonna be able to do it. So in that case, you have to melt the candle. This is relatively straight sided, but it does go in just a little bit. Let me see if I can see. Um, so right here, it does go in just a little bit. So I melt these ones. And as I said before, it's mulled cider. It's very good. Okay. Also, I've taken off the label and I've put it on a bag already. And it does say, usually these are easy peel, but this one gave me a little bit of trouble getting it off. But I always put a big hunk of tape on it to keep it down. Now, if you're putting candles in a candle crock, I leave the label on because as the candle melts, so does the adhesive from the label. So when you pull the candle out of the crock, you can easily pull off the label, put it on your polypropylene bag, put a piece of tape on it just for insurance, and you're good to go. And I might add, these are polypropylene bags that I get from eBay, but you can get them eBay, um, Amazon, lots of vendors sell them now. I used to get mine from L3 Waxy Wonders. They also have uh, bakery bags. Uh, Destination Wax sells uh, polypropylene bags now. So your favorite vendor, check with them, eBay, Amazon, but polypropylene is what you're looking for. Okay, I have um, my, this is a new measuring cup because my old wax measuring cup finally got a crack in it. I got this at Dollar Tree, $1. This is specifically for wax. That's all it's going to be. It's gonna go back in the wax. What does my sister call it? The bombshell, the bomb shelter for wax. It's gonna go back in there. And then I have laid out my molds on uh, an old kitchen towel. I'm going to use my waffle molds today. I haven't used those in a while. These I got from eBay as well. Just uh, go to eBay and look for candy molds, wax molds, and they're all gonna come up there together. Okay, so let's get to the crux of the matter. Now, before I tell you what I'm going to do, I know that you are going to tell me I'm crazy, this is dangerous, I shouldn't be doing it. Um, which is everything I thought about when I saw this video. I can't even remember who posted it now. I've been doing my candles this way now for six months or more um, without any problems. Um, I have seen or heard of somebody putting a candle in the oven in a water bath to melt it that way. I've not tried that. I'm kind of okay with what I'm doing, so I'll probably stick to this method. So you ask, what is the big mystery? We are going to put the candle in a shallow bath of water on the stove. So let's move over here to the stove. All right, so I'm gonna get you in close here. So you can see the pot. So this is just a little shallow uh, pan. It has about, I don't know, half an inch or, of water in there right now, and it's cold water. 
and I'm going to put the candle in the water. It's going to come up maybe about a quarter of the way up the candle, not just not halfway. And I know it's I know it's going to be okay, honest. And I'm going to turn the heat on low. Where am I? Uh, whoops. Up here. Uh, a small burner. Yes, small. So I'm going to start like my cam about up to like three out of ten. Okay, so like medium low. I'm going to start it at the low at the co and cold because I want the candle to come up to temperature at the same rate as the water. I don't want to put a cold candle in hot boiling water. That would not be good. That would be stupid actually. Um, and so this is only to get only going to get just. I will show you as it goes. I'm going to pause the video and then I'll come back when it when it's where it's supposed to be. Uh, it's going to only have just a very very gentle gentle bubble. It's not going to boil. It's not going to rumble. It's not going to simmer. Well, I guess you, I wouldn't even call it a simmer, really. Um, this came with, a, with those plastic lids, which I took off. But if it has a metal lid or a glass lid, I would put it on and I would just tilt it to let, I just don't want, I don't know, I don't know what I'm doing, actually. But in my mind, I don't want too much pressure to build up in there. So I always just tilt the lid a little bit. But this is a, this is a plastic, so I'm just going to leave it off. Now, I know a question is going to be, um, am I going to lose all the scent? And no, I'm not, because you will find the heat is coming from the bottom first. So this top layer is going to be the last layer to melt. And I keep an eye on it. And as soon as this top layer is melted, I'm going to take it off. I'm immediately going to pour it, and it's going to harden very quickly. So, like I said, I've been melting the candles for quite some time, or using a candle crock. And uh, I've not had any problems with losing a lot of scent. So I think I'm going to cut it off right there. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to say at this point. Um, I don't think so. Um, so we will just let this come to temp very slowly. And uh, and I, I, as I said, I, I don't go far when I'm doing this process. I always am keeping an eye on it. And if I find that the bubble is getting too uh, vigorous, I definitely will turn it down. So this is a, even though, I mean, I'm gonna say it's a slow process. It's not compared to putting a candle in a candle crock, which depending on the size of your candle could take anywhere between you know, five to eight hours. This is going to take approximately 30 to 45 minutes again decide depending on the diameter of the candle and and actually in the tall and the height of the candle as well because as i said the heat is going to come up from the bottom so if you have a taller candle it's going to take longer to get to the top so um we will pause it right there and as you uh, you can't see probably i'm gonna try to get you really low here you can, it's just starting to take a couple a couple of little bubbles at the bottom so these little bubbles are just going to barely bubble up and that's what I'm looking for. So I will check back with you here in just a few minutes, bye. Okay, we are back with an update and as you can see, there are some bubbles on the bottom and they are just barely bubbling up very slowly. We don't wanna rush this. Um, and the elapsed time, I should say that I set my, I put the stopwatch on after I ended the video. So, um, I added like two minutes to that and then it was like I did it on my phone it's like well that doesn't hey everybody uh just a check in here so I set originally I set the stopwatch on my phone but then I thought well I have to film with my phone so I switched it over to the iPad and there was about 10 minutes on my phone so we're in about 14 minutes now so let's just head a little peek over here and see what's going on. So you can see there's some big bubbles at the bottom, but they are just barely bubbling up nice and slow. That's all we want, no more than that. Um, because obviously this is a glass vessel. We don't want to crack it or do anything crazy. So a very slow boil, Not like I said, not a boil, just a little, little bubble. So after 14 minutes, um, you can see that it's starting to melt on the sides there and on the bottom. It will gradually come up. So we will check back uh, in a little bit. Whoops, that's my finger. And uh, I'll update you shortly. Okay, we are back for another check-in. We are 20 minutes in. And you can still see there's just 
lots of little bubbles on the bottom. They're just slowly, ever so slowly coming up. The wick, uh, sorry, the wax is almost completely melted. Probably five more minutes will come back and it should be done. I'll be able to pull those wick, uh, wicks out. And yeah, so I'll be back in about five minutes or so. Bye. Okay, so we are back. The elapsed time is 37 minutes. Uh, and the uh, wax is almost all melted. There's a little blob of it in the corner. I'm going to call it a day because I don't really want to leave this top layer exposed for too long, so I'm good with that. I have just a, a homework candle lid, oops, to fish out. Mm-hmm, okay. Well, that didn't go as planned. All right, no problemo. Usually I just grab the wicks one by one and they come out. In this case, I did not want to do that. So we will resort to other methods. There we go. Okay. All righty then. So now we are going to pour the wax into the measuring cup and pour from the measuring cup with the spout. Believe me when I tell you this, the first time I did this with any either method, crock included, I tried to pour from the candle vessel, made a big old mess, not good. So we are going to pour Okay, now then, the jar obviously is warm. So I have this silicone glove here. I used to have two. I don't know where the other one is. So let's pour this into the measuring cup without making too much of a mess. And I do have this Temptations glove, I guess I do need it. Okay. Oops. Okay, well that went pretty good. Okay, I'm just gonna deposit this in the sink and then I'm gonna move you guys over um, to the pouring <gasps> station. It was quite dramatic there, but I just uh, jiggled the measuring cup, uh, but I'm fine. All right, so it sure does smell good though. This is a really good candle. As I said before, mulled cider is very good. So let's just start pouring and just take your time with this. We've got a couple of minutes and just go right up to the top because as they cool, they are going to sink down a little bit. And I don't know why I pulled out all three. I'm not gonna need all three. Probably just, probably just this one actually. So, you know, as I said before, any even if you're not somebody who likes to burn candles, this is a great way to take advantage of Candle Day. You know, at Bath and Body Works or all the Yankee sales or whatever candle you like. I'm making a big mess. Um, you, you, just because you don't burn candles doesn't mean that you still can't take advantage of the fragrance to make your house smell pretty. Let me pour some round ones too. So you can chop, you can melt, and make your own little wax melts. And you don't need to buy candy molds or wax molds. You can get a mini muffin tin at Walmart for like five bucks, and those make 24 melts. Oh, well, let me take that back. It holds 24 little mini muffins, so depending on how big your candle is, you can, you'll need one or more if it's a really big Yankee candle. Um, we're almost done. See that one little $3.33 candle made a lot of wax melts. 
So in this way, you don't have to just burn it in one room. You can have the scent in multiple rooms if that's what you want to do. Okay, still pouring. Okay, I think I got one more in here. I think I got one more in here. That's it. That's it. Okay, so this I'm just gonna put in the sink with hot water and then uh, I'll come and clean it in a bit. And as I said, that's my wax um, measuring cup only. Okay, so we are 42 minutes in. Uh, can you see? Yeah, 42 minutes in. And now we just sit for these to wait. You know, the longer you can let them be, the better. If you start messing with them and they're not uh, coming out easily or if they're bending, they're not done yet. Just, you're going to be tempted to want to play with them and mess with them. Just leave them alone. Probably I'm going to leave them for two hours. I'm going to do some house cleaning and then we will come back in two hours and show you the finished product. So basically in 42 minutes, we melted a candle, which in a candle crock would have taken a minimum of four to five hours for that little candle. Um, and actually that squat, that little um, uh, mainstays candle, I'm not even sure if those, the wider three wicks fit in the crock. Actually, I don't think they do. Um, but anyhow, so I will see you in two hours. We will unveil the finished product and we will, our house will smell like apple cider. I'll see you later. Okay, so we're back and our total time from start of the process is two hours and 17 minutes. So if you recall, it took about 35 or 37 minutes to melt that three wick candle uh, from Mainstays. So now these guys have been drying for whatever that means, like an hour and a half, something like that. I've been cleaning and whatnot. So um, they definitely are hard. I did try to test one a minute ago and you can see that they came out really easily. They're not bending, they're firm and they're easily removing from the tray. So these guys are ready to go. They still have a lot of scent. They've not lost any of their scent in the process of melting the candle. So that's it. So Barbara, here was your, your video and everybody else that asked for it. So again, I understand that that process looked really scary um, and I want to be very clear, this is not a process that you can walk away. I really want you to watch that pot simmering very, very closely. I actually turned mine down there at one point close to the end because the, the bubbles were getting a little too vigorous, although they weren't, you know, it wasn't a rumbling boil by any means, but um, you really just want barely a very light bubble and uh, you should be good to go. So uh, any comments or questions, please leave them down below. I'll be happy to help you with any questions you have and I will talk to you later. Bye.